Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss about Amazon RDS. RDS stands for Relational Database Service and it's a managed database service by Amazon. Okay, so now what is a database and what is a managed database service? Let's try to understand more about it. Okay, so firstly, let's try to see what a database is. As most of you might already know, database is basically a computer system to uh, store your structured information. Okay, so it's a very critical part of most of the applications, be it web applications or anything. So if you have a website you are, and you are like I mean, storing some data in the database in the back end and your website will be fetching that data from a database. So almost all the applications uh, will have a need for a database. Okay, so uh, databases are of two types. One is relational, which is also called as SQL database, and the other one is non-relational, which is also called as NoSQL databases. Now, SQL, the examples of SQL databases include your Postgres, MySQL, Microsoft SQL, MariaDB, Oracle, etc. Okay, so now with that con context of what a database is, uh, let's try to understand like I mean how databases are created. So mostly I mean uh, in legacy systems databases used to be on premise. Okay, you, you used to create databases on on premise servers. Okay, now what are the challenges of an on premise database, right? So there are uh, infrastructure costs to it. Like I mean you have to uh, buy your own hardware and you have to maintain it and all those things. So uh, and scalability is also one of the issues. So if you have to scale up and scale down, it's not so uh, you know quick and easy right and of course there is ma maintenance and upgrade so you will have to uh, maintain that server and database yourself if there are any software updates you will have to do it yourself manually so there is a lot of operational overhead included involved in it and uh, the other thing is also high availability and disaster recovery so you will have to like i mean set up a robust disaster recovery methods and like I mean, which is not easy for any on-premise systems okay so uh, those are some of the challenges of an on-premise database although there are a lot more challenges okay so now what is the solution is it like i mean just moving to cloud will fix all those issues let's see okay so now let's uh, imagine like i mean we are hosting a database uh, on an ec2 server and not our local you know on-premise server now what problems does it solve it of course uh, like i mean solves to an extent the issue like i mean the problem of infrastructure so you will have a full control of uh, infrastructure you can scale up and down uh, a bit more flexibly and i mean it's very easy to deploy infrastructure and things like that okay and there is also uh, like i mean customization so uh, you can like i mean customize it according to your needs the i mean operating systems and things like that and the other most important thing is high availability so usually like i mean the aws promises you high high availability which you cannot be guaranteed in an on premise system okay so that is advantages of moving to uh, moving your database i mean from your on premise server to an ec2 server okay so but it has its own limitations right like what are the limitations it still involves a manual setup so you still have to create the tc2 server and then you know uh, install your database and then configure and maintain it on an ec2 server it's not automatic and then there is uh, resource management so you will have to like i mean uh, depending on your needs you will have to like you know scale up or scale down and you will have to um, manage this ec2 resource by yourself and then again there is operational overhead involved so you will have to apply the patches and you know any uh, software updates or any security patches or uh, all such things by yourself and there is uh, like i mean a skill and a time involved in doing all that okay so those are the uh, limitations of you know it kind of solve some issues of an on-premise server but still it has its own limitation so to fix these limitations aws came up with this managed database service called as rds okay so what is rds like i mean by definition it's it is basically a relational database service which is a managed database service provided provided by aws so what is meant by managed database service you don't like i mean basically all the infrastructure and security and licensing and you know uh, all the scalability everything aws manages for you you don't have to do that so usually it's it's kind of an you know you just go to your go to your aws account and rds service and then go and click uh, create database and it will be ready for use okay it's that simple everything is managed by aws in the back end okay so that is the definition of rds let's see what are the key uh, features and you know advantages of using rds so firstly like we already discussed it is a managed service so 
uh, all the you know installation configuration and everything is managed by aws all the security updates software updates and everything is managed by aws you don't have to like i mean bother about it you just have to go and you know select what database engine you want and then just create it and it also provides multiple database engines so you can like i mean depending on your requirement you might be using mysql or postgres mariadb oracle microsoft so it provides all this uh, options it also provides uh, aurora db as well which is a basically uh, aws proprietary database engine okay and uh, it is easy to deploy like i was saying you just have to go to the console or like i mean you can also create through using uh, cli or apis so it is very easy to deploy and you can get it up and running within seconds okay and uh, the next thing is high availability so aws provides you like i mean high availability since it will uh, be uh, like keeping it in multiple availability zones and uh, it promises you basically a high availability which is very beneficial for uh, critical business applications okay and then there is security so aws uh, promises as the security of our database like i mean using uh, vpc using kms and all those things encryption and all those things so we will discuss each one of this in upcoming videos where we dig into all the features in detail okay and then there is scalability so it's very easy to vertically scale up or down your uh, database uh, instances by just selecting the type of instance and things like this so we will look into this also how to scale your uh, rds instances up and down okay so that i mean rds provides you scalability uh, on that okay and then there is automatic backup so uh, aws like i mean backs up your uh, database at you know certain points of time automatically so you can uh, basically restore your database to any point in time within a basically a retention period and you can also create ma manual backups if you need and then there is cross region replication so you can i mean replicate your data across regions so i mean this is very useful for uh, disaster recovery in top like i mean in case something happens in a particular region right and then there is a database migration survey so there is a service called dms which you can use to uh, migrate your existing on-premise databases into uh, rds very seamlessly so this facilitates migrating your on-premise servers to rds i mean cloud very easily and then it uh, integrates with other aws services quite seamlessly uh, which we'll also see uh, in i mean uh, upcoming videos so this is very useful when you are building your applications in cloud and you need to like i mean interact with different different aws services so it's very uh, seamless to integrate rds with other aws services so these are some key features of rds now uh, like i mean like we already discussed these are the supported database engines so depending on your use case you can spin up like a I main database uh, instance with any of these engines okay and we will basically in our upcoming videos we will go into hands on into how to create a database instance which it with each of these database engines okay and then coming to the pricing of amazon rds so the pricing basically depends on a uh, lot of factors so the one factor is instance type so whether you want an on demand instance or a reserved instance on demand instance is something which uh, you create and then i mean you can uh, kill it whenever you don't want okay so it's basically you are just paying for when uh, the time for which your instance is running uh, and then there is reserved instance so basically reserved instance is you make an upfront commitment uh, and you say that okay i'm going to uh, keep this instance for this duration of time so this will basically uh, provide you some discount because you are paying upfront and then you are committing to a certain period okay so those are two types of instances and then there is uh, it also depends on your storage options so if you want general purpose ssd storage which is good enough for most applications or if you want provisioned uh, iop storage so basically this is when you need a high throughput if your data like i mean if your application is very uh, business critical and you want very low latency on your database then you can pro have a provisioned iops uh, storage as well okay and then uh, it also depends on your engine type basically what is your engine type microsoft sql mysql and also that so if suppose if you are uh, using a microsoft sql uh, then like in your bill the license cost of that database engine is also included so basically aws provides a license for you okay and then there is also data transfer cost involved so if you are like i mean transferring the database data from like i mean different uh, databases and s3 to database and all that so there is also a data transfer cost involved so aws also provides a free tier uh, 
trial for people who want to like i mean play around with ideas and explore ideas so there is also a free try free tire you know available so we will also see how to use this free tire and you know kind of get some hands on experience on ideas so uh, that was a brief uh, like explanation about what RDS is and what are its features and etc. Now let's go to uh, AWS console and just try to see how RDS console looks like and what are there, what are all the components that are there over there. So I'm in my AWS console. You can search for RDS here and then open RDS console. I already have it open. So this is how the console looks like. So if you have any databases created, it will come here and then you have a query editor so you can current connect to any of the existing uh, databases and then uh, query your data from there and then there are snapshot exports automated backups reserved instances so all these things are there so we'll get into all these like i mean in our hands-on tutorials and so if you want to cl click on create database if you can so if, i just want to show you like how easy it is to get the database up and running within seconds okay so there is a standard create so you can just select the engine that you want so it can be any of the supported engines and then uh, you can also select like i mean the version and all those things so if you see so these are the available versions for mysql and then uh, so it's a production database or dev de test database and then you just put the identifier name and then create and master username and password and all those things and uh, so the storage configuration you can select and then there is instance class so you just select all this and then go and there are some vpc settings involved and then click on go to create database so basically you just need to fill up this form and it will also show you like i mean uh, the estimated cost uh, like i mean for the monthly cost for the configurations that you have selected okay so let's not like i mean create now we'll in the next video i'll show you how to create a free tire database and uh, explore that uh, database service without actually paying anything to aws okay so i just wanted to show you how easy it is to like i mean uh, fill out this form and then get your database up and running within a few minutes okay so that's it for this video i hope you got uh, you know decent understanding about what rds is and what uh, what are its features and what it's used for in the next videos we'll uh, kind of try to do some hands on and then explore more about Amazon RDS. Thank you and I'll see you in the next video.